Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking about my favourite acoustic guitar, the Martin 0015M. So this particular guitar I bought second hand quite recently um, with my very first paycheck. This is the earlier 2000s model, I think this one is from somewhere around 2002-ish and it's it's quite beautiful. It's a solid mahogany top, solid mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck and rosewood fretboard. This was Martin's kind of more minimalistic uh, guitar range that they're really aiming to sing a songwriters who are on a bit more of a budget. So there's kind of no frills here, no binding, no heavy inlays, nothing super fancy, but it's kind of just raw, stripped back and just beautiful in general. It's super nice, it's much more mellow than any other guitars I own, uh, particularly those with a spruce top. The body profile is is interesting. It's quite thin uh, from a body perspective. Other acoustic guitars like standard dreadnoughts are a little bit deeper, but surprisingly this doesn't miss out on much of the bass response. It's still quite good. It's not super bassy, but I don't think I'd want it to be super bassy. For me it's kind of that right amount of bass response, but the trebles and the mids are super sweet. I think these retail for about one and a half thousand pounds brand new here in the UK. The price of which has gone up quite a lot recently because I think there's been a mahogany shortage or some restrictions put in place on sourcing mahogany. Uh, and as a result, the, uh, the supply of mahogany has gone down, but the demand's more or less stayed the same or even gone up, so up goes the price. <laughs> but you can still get some good deals secondhand. So I paid about 850 pounds for this guitar with a hard case. And I think that is a damn good deal. There are a few dings on it. I mean, it's 20 years old. It's not going to be pristine. The pit guard has a few scratches on it. There are a few kind of sweat marks just from age and playing on the guitar. I think that kind of adds some character though. Again, on the back, there's a kind of a sweat mark buckle rash thing going on towards the center of the body. The strap pin is ever so slightly misaligned, but I'm probably going to put a pickup in this eventually so that doesn't bother me too much. There's a few kind of dinks along the neck from where other people have put capos along the neck and perhaps knock them when they're playing but I'm probably going to do that anyway so I'm not that bothered. Um, and the same goes for the, the headstock. There's a few marks on the headstock where um, the previous owners or people who have worked on the guitar have used string winders to speed up the restringing process and they've kind of marked the headstock a little bit. But all in all, the marks are not that noticeable for a guitar of this age and it's in great condition. As you can see, it's very versatile for strumming. It's nice and soft, mellow. Really brings out the chords quite well. But it's also really nice for finger picking. So I've always wanted one of these guitars since I was a kid. One of my biggest inspirations in songwriting is an artist called Dallas Green from City and Color and he used one of these for the majority of his first few albums. I think that kind of tone profile has just stuck with me. It's something that I've always been looking for in acoustic guitars that I play. More recently another artist that I found that uses not this specific guitar but I think a mahogany guild was Nick Drake and he's got this really really indescribable mellow guitar tone coming from two things one being what's likely to be an all mahogany guitar body and the other thing being his really really dead strings. <laughs> what I'm doing on this guitar is trying my best not to break the strings <laughs> so that they age and get that really dead dull tone and then I can try and get some Nick Drake inspired sounds going on. So would I recommend this guitar to you? Yes, if you have the budget for it. It's a very easy guitar to play and I think anyone would love this thing. I think if you're starting out, there'll be better options 
for your money if you have a smaller budget. But if you can afford one of these, even at the kind of second-hand price that I paid, it's definitely worth trying to scout out for one because it will be a guitar that you are likely to own forever and never want to get rid of. <laughs> I'll never be getting rid of this this thing. Uh, it's going to stick with me forever and hopefully join me on my journey of writing many more songs. One other thing to note is that the newer model of this mahogany guitar has a couple of differences from this one. Um, one being that this has circular inlays. Uh, the newer ones have this kind of diamond club inlay thing. Um, and the tuners on here have kind of these standard tuning peg kind of things whereas the the new model has these slightly smaller more vintage looking tuners which i think look better in my opinion but hey ho back before martin updated this range there are also a few models that were branded under different names i think the j15 was one of them it's very similar to this guitar in that it's all mahogany with a very similar body profile but I think it was the kind of jumbo version um, and I don't think there's a huge amount of information online about that particular model so if you find one uh, it might be worth picking it up so in the comments let me know what you think are you thinking of buying one of these or are you thinking of buying a Martin in general or are you just having an explore and seeing what's out there I don't think there's too much more to say about this guitar so I'm gonna end this video here and I'll see you again next time bye if that plane could go away that'd be great I'm trying to make a video man it's going to land now